I've clicked onto the Global Tropical Orbi for March the 16th, 2023. That's always the case in these videos that takes best your mind alone. And if you're here looking for a local information to you, I had about tropical cycling in the wrong places, so I was getting a big picture of things, and I cannot get down to a local level with your local weather office or local emergency management can. So, kinds of topics today, we have a few systems to talk about. Uh, firstly, we're going to dive into 91P here, uh, which is a very compact system and I think it's personally a tropical depression and has been uh, for the past couple of days. And this system is going to continue towards the west. And I know a lot of you in Fiji might be wondering, do I really need to watch this system as that's a pretty close pass to me. And uh, really, if I were to get an answer right now, I'd say if you want rainfall, pay attention to it because it may bring some increased rainfall to the island. but. Uh, in no way are we expecting this to be a big cyclone uh, coming your way. The environmental conditions are just not favorable for that, and they are not going to be favorable for that. And if we go into what's going on in the forecast, here's the GFS, and you can see that general weak signature. Uh, first thing of note, you can see how low the middle of the relative humidity is overall uh, for this system. And really the only moisture that it has is with the convective burst that it has right now. And the convective burst over the past day really have been more pulsing uh, more than anything, uh, where the thunderstorms go up for a little bit and they come back down and they come back up and come back down like that. A more of a pulsing like matter. And as the system continues towards the uh, general westerly direction, uh, it may actually get more moisture. To deal with but environmental conditions become more unfavorable for uh, intensification or even redevelopment if it does die uh, or lose tropical cyclone status here's the uh, gfs sounding and this is at hour 86 i can go here on this plot just to show you the track that the gfs takes and you can see this system generally takes that track that we talked about generally westwards or southwestwards and then as we get towards four days this system starts to come north and gets closer to Fiji. And I, as I talked about, you could see some increased rainfalls. You can see some of that moisture coming north with the system. But if we look deeper into the troposphere to see what is exactly going on environmentally wise, here's a sounding over the system from the GFS at that same hour. And what we can see is a few features. And uh, if you can't, if you don't know how to read these plots, I'm going to explain what we're going to be looking at. Uh, if we look at the center graph here, this is the first thing we're going to be looking at. And what this is, is it's a skew T plot. And what this shows is temperature and dew point, temperature in red, dew point in green. And it shows this over the entire troposphere up to uh, pretty much the stratosphere. And if you see areas of where the red and green lines are close together, that's a pretty moist part of the troposphere. But if you see an area like this, where the green and red lines are separated, that means more dry air is in place. And you can see that there on the modeling here in the mid-levels of the troposphere, there is some dry air. But in general, the overall relative humidity throughout, throughout the entire column is about 79%. On the model we can see that it's got a decent moisture pocket but for a developing tc this could potentially have some issues if you have some wind shear and boy do we have some wind shear you can see the uh, mean shear on the model is about 53 knots between 850 millibars and 200 millibars that's about here all the way up to here and this will make for a pretty poor environment for 91P as it nears Fiji. You can see in the low levels, we have an easterly flow. And as you go into the mid levels, we completely turn that around going more westerly. And as you go up into the troposphere, it gets even stronger, uh, even 50 knot winds there at the 200 millibar level. And that's what this plot on the right here shows is the uh, direction of wind with height. So this is the low levels here, mid levels, and then you get into the upper levels of the troposphere. Now, for a weak system like 91P, it's more likely going to feel the lower half of this flow. And we can see that if we get a cross section over the system, you can see in general, thunderstorm activity really does not extend far above the 700 millibar level. 
This can also be seen if we look at the 500 millibar vorticity, you can see this lines up well with the cross section with for the vorticity not really too pronounced with 91p at the 500 millibar level it's because it's because it's fairly weak and it could also be attributed by that additional dry pocket that you can see here on uh, that um, skew teapot and we can also see what's causing the shear if we look at the 200 millibar level and you can actually see this on the cross section here uh, this is cutting right north to south or more south to north, but same thing, uh, over the system. But it's also catching part of an upper level trough here. And you can see those strong winds there. That's um, winds aloft 50 to 60 knots. And that is very strong. And no, the system doesn't at this point in the cross section extend all the way up there. But if this tries to build thunderstorms to potentially get better organized and strengthen, it's more likely to get sheared off you get say a thunderstorm building up and it gets up here into the mid and upper levels and then it hits this strong winds uh, and it gets sheared and that would be the end of that convective burst most likely and this would likely hinder any formation uh, or intensification of 91p and you can see as we go ahead in time on the model you can see this system does eventually come towards fiji you can see there uh, by about five days it's now in fiji and the environmental conditions are still pretty poor here uh, the shear might have relaxed a little bit but we're also seeing some dry air come in on the southern side and we may still also have some dry air uh, over the system so in general this is a pretty poor environment and especially after uh, what it just went through it may not survive that a system like this really can struggle to survive in an environment that poor uh, so really like i said at the beginning the main threat here for fiji is rainfall and uh, some of that rainfall may be even beneficial depending on how rainfall has been this year now we're going to move to the next system in the south pacific we have invest 90 90p i almost said 96p but this is 90p here and i circled this whole area because it is entangled with a trough of low pressure which extends generally from New Caledonia all the way up into the Papua New Guinea region and it's difficult to figure out where the actual center of this is uh, but I believe that the center is right about here in this mass of thunderstorms uh, tracking along the New Caledonia coastline there and uh, this is what models are catching on to you can see here at the initialization of the GFS and so does the European uh, this initializes an area of low pressure generally where we just looked at that uh, blob of thunderstorm. So this is where I think the center is and this system is going to continue tracking towards the southeast and uh, as it gets down here environmental conditions are likely going to become poor as well uh, as they did with 91p. If we look at the current water vapor view uh, we can see first off there's the system there uh, near New Caledonia but we also have this large upper ridge here over eastern Australia and this is going to propagate eastwards in the coming days as this system also comes towards the southeast and as the system gets in this general region east of New Caledonia this ridge is now going to be uh, turning the flow in the low levels back towards the northwest so this changes the entire steering flow for the system in the low levels but in the upper levels we're going to have uh, the same trough that is going to shear 91p and also we're going to have a large upper ridge here that will be keeping the mid and upper level flow out of the northwesterly direction so you get a scenario similar to 91p where you have a significant change of di wind direction with height and we can see this if we look at a cross section on the gfs you can see that flow here uh, from that ridge it will at, at some point turn more southeasterly but you can also see that flow up aloft from that trough in that upper level ridge uh, keeping that flow aloft out of the west another thing to note you can also see here there is a pretty deep pocket of dry air extending from uh, say the 750 millibar level all the way up to 200 millibars it's a very deep region of dry air and we can see that dry air now if we look at the ridge there and this is a pretty 
uh, dry environment there uh, underneath that ridge. So this is overall going to set up for a pretty poor environment for the system. And we can also see this if we look at the European. It shows an even drier uh, pocket here uh, from a, around the same area, about 750 millibars to 200 millibars. And you can also see that uh, changing flow with height. You can see more southeasterly flow in the low levels and westerly flow in the upper levels. And if we look at different plots on the GFS, here's that same frame from those uh, cross section, not cross sections, the soundings that we took. You can see the system here, and we also have some increased uh, generally westerly flow. And this is from this trough that will eventually shear 91P. And we also have this upper ridge here, which is bringing that flow as well. And overall, this sets the stage for a pretty poor environment for 90P. You can also see the poor vorticity signature at the 500 millibar level due to the poor environmental conditions. Though this will likely not be the end of 90p, uh, you can see this bridge is uh, pretty deep in the troposphere. And eventually, we are going to get the upper level trough and the upper level ridge to back off a little bit. And at that point, this system being much more weak will likely track back towards the northwest. Now, models have been flipping over the past several days if they want development in this part of the world. And from what I can see, the environmental conditions the models are depicting here are still pretty poor. There's pretty poor relative humidity and pretty poor wind shear. So overall, I would not expect development out of this system. Its best chance, I'd say, right now is right now. Over the next day, that's its best chance to become a tropical cyclone as right now, uh, we can even look at that on the GFS. As this starts to come back towards the north, you can see that shift in flow. And as we go towards day five, the moisture pocket is decent over the system. But if we look at a cross, not a cross section, a sounding, I keep mixing up those words and if I can actually get a position right over the storm, you can see still some pretty significant shear because we've got uh, northwesterly flow aloft and easterly flow out of the easterly direction and after five days the relative humidity does get a bit worse and uh, the system also begins to track towards the southeast again where environmental conditions are still not too favorable so overall environmental conditions are not looking favorable for 90p's development and really the main threat here uh, to new caledonia and maybe even some of the vanuatu islands is some rainfall and after that uh, 90p will likely be done for and uh, if we really need to go back and talk about this system really too much at all we certainly will in future global tropical overviews we have one more system to talk about today and this is invest 92s here uh, this is in the southwest indian ocean here's mauritius and here's la reunion and uh, i apologize for those flashing frames for a second there uh, not exactly sure what's going on there, but the system overall looks fairly disorganized. You can see a large mass of thunderstorm activity there. And uh, ASCAT passes indicate the center is roughly about here on the western end of the storm. And we can see that if we look at this ASCAT C pass, the, or sorry, ASCAT B pass that we got earlier in the day, you can see a well defined circulation. Uh, you can see in pretty good, it, it's closed as well. But we've talked about before. Uh, weak circulations are generally, they can be considered tropical cyclones. I guess it's more subjective, but to me, I would like to see a, a, a bit of a stronger vortex around uh, this entire system. And right now, we only have about 10 knot winds surrounding the entire center. It is closed, so this certainly does have a chance to develop if it maybe gets a good moisture pocket in here and develops further, it certainly could become a weak tropical cyclone. Though environmental conditions will not be favoring this system as is the case with our other two systems. Here's the sounding from the GFS. You can see a lot of dry air in the troposphere in the same case with the European. And uh, I can go forward in this as, we, as it gets towards a La Reunion. You can see those environmental conditions really do not uh, get any th more favorable and wind shear also ranges 10 to 20 knots depending on where you look in the actual forecast off the models here's the European look as it gets towards Ray Union and uh, this is another case of if the system were to form the 
greatest chance would still remain rainfall for Mauritius and La Reunion. We're not expecting a big TC out of this. Uh, the environmental conditions are just not favorable for it. And uh, right now, with every system really that we're talking about today, the most likely impact from this will be rainfall and significant development out of any of these systems, including 92S here is what we're looking at, is uh, unlikely. Uh, but for those in La Reunion and Mauritius, especially half after going through Freddy, it's certainly something to watch uh, just for additional rainfall, as I'm sure you got a lot of rainfall there after the system passed through. That is all that I've got to talk about for today. Uh, the tropics are a little active, but thankfully none of these systems are becoming very strong. Bit of a longer video than I expected, but I always uh, expect uh, shorter videos and then I go on uh, all these rants about all these uh, different features in the troposphere and I can extend the video as long as I uh, talk. But I'll have further videos out later in the week and into next week, uh, if necessary, of course. Uh, and hopefully we won't be looking at any big tropical cyclones. And uh, I may even uh, decide to look maybe at the northern hemisphere or potentially what we could uh, see this upcoming hurricane season in the Atlantic and Pacific in the coming months. Uh, but thank you all for watching and I hope you all are doing well.